There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. He was a good and blameless man before God who rejected evil. Job was a man of great wealth, blessed with a family of seven sons and three daughters, and herds numbering in the tens of thousands. He was the greatest man in all the East, and his life was without trouble, until Satan set out to destroy his soul. The Animated Bible presents Job. In those days, Job's sons held feasts in their homes, where they gathered with their sisters to eat and drink as one family. And so it was that after their days of feasting, Job would make sacrifices to the Lord God. Perhaps one of my children has sinned and cursed God in their hearts. I will make these sacrifices on their behalf. And so did Job for each of his children. Now there was a day in heaven when the sons of God presented themselves before him. Among them was Satan. And God said to him, Where have you come from? from wandering the earth and walking to and fro upon it. Have you considered my servant Job? A good and upright man, fearing God and refusing evil. There is none like him in all the earth. Does Job fear God without reason? Have you not protected him in every way and blessed all that he has put his hands to? but take away everything he has, and see then if he will not curse you to your face. Behold, I place all that Job has in your power. Do what you will, only do not harm Job himself. So Satan departed from the presence of the Lord and set out to destroy Job. Now it so happened that on a given day, Job's servants were working in the fields when an army attacked. Sabians! It's the Sabians! Go! Go! The Sabians were ruthless, killing Job's servants and making off with the herds. One servant survived and ran to the house of his master. Master Job! Master Job! The Sabaeans, they have taken the herds and killed, killed all the servants. And I, I alone have survived. At nearly the same time, a hailstone of fire fell to earth, consuming Job's herd of sheep and the servants who tended them. The heavens are raining fire! Run for your lives! Oh, Master! Master Job, there was nothing we could do. Fire fell from the heavens, killing all your sheep and your servants who were tending them. And I alone have escaped to share this terrible news. And yet a third tragedy struck Job in that very hour. What's that? It's coming from all around. The Chaldean army surrounded Job's servants, killing them and making away with his camels. Once again, 
All the servants were killed, save for one. The camels, they're all gone. Stolen by the Chaldeans, who killed your servants. All except me, who escaped to tell you what has happened. No, no, no. This can't be. With all his livestock dead or stolen, and his servants killed, Job was about to receive the worst news yet. Brother, what is it? I do not know. It looks like it's coming this... Inside! Back inside! Now! Get back inside! Oh, Master, I cannot bear to tell you the news. What is it? Look at me now and tell me what has happened. A great wind came upon the home of your eldest while he was feasting with his brothers and sisters. It destroyed the house and all your children. All of them have been killed. I alone have escaped to tell you. Hearing the tragic news, Job tore his robe and ran into his house. With his knife, he shaved all of his hair, and falling to the ground, he worshipped God. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall depart this earth. The Lord God has given to me, and now he has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all the loss Job endured, he did not sin by blaming God. And it happened yet again that on a given day the sons of God presented themselves before the Lord, and among them was Satan. And the Lord God said to him, Where have you come from? From wandering the earth and walking to and fro upon it. Have you considered my servant, Job? There is none like him in all the earth. He is blameless and upright. He fears God and turns away from all evil. He maintains his integrity, even though you incited me against him to harm him without cause. Skin for skin. A man will give up everything he has to save his own life. Stretch out your hand now and strike his flesh and he will curse you to your face. He is in your hands. Only spare his life. Once again, Satan left the presence of the Lord and made his way to Job. What's wrong? <gasps> Boils, inflamed sores covered Job's body from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Great with discomfort, he attempted to scrape them off, but his agony only grew worse. While Job's wife was horrified to see Job's condition, she was equally perplexed as to why all these things were coming upon him. I don't understand. How is it you can keep your integrity before God? Curse him now, so you may die. You speak as a fool. How can we accept 
good from God and not accept trouble. In all his affliction, God's servant Job did not sin. Now Job had three friends who, upon hearing what had come upon him, sought Job out to comfort him. Their names were Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. As they approached their friend, they covered themselves in dust and tore their garments. Job, can this be you? What is this evil that has fallen on you? Sharing his grief, Job's friends sat with him in silence. They could see the great suffering their friend was enduring. Seven days and nights passed, and still they sat in silence, until... Let the day I was born disappear. May it be lost. May people curse that day. Oh, why? Why did I not just die the same day I was born? For what I feared the most has come upon me. Hearing Job's lament, his three friends tried to console and counsel him. My friend, if I may. You are known to have instructed many and to have strengthened the weak, but now, has anyone perished being innocent? Those who sow evil reap evil. Yet man is born for trouble, as surely as sparks fly upward. He will afflict, but he will also make you whole. Look at me. My body is crawling with worms, and my skin covered with sores. Leave me alone, for my days are but a breath. And then, Bildad offered instruction. Job, if you plead your case with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, he will restore you. He will fill your mouth with laughter. <laughs> For God will not reject a perfect man. I know what you say is true, but how can a mortal man possibly be just? before the one who has power to command the sun not to rise. When he passes by, I cannot see him. Even if I were innocent, how could I answer him who was so mighty? And then Zophar spoke next. You say that your beliefs are pure, but oh, that God would speak now and open his lips against you. For God punishes you less than you deserve. If you prepare your heart and remove your sin, then he will lift you up and you shall forget your trouble. It is in God's hands all these things have happened. He makes the nations great and he has the power to destroy them. You smear me with lies. You would have shown more wisdom by keeping your mouths closed. Who are you to counsel on God's behalf? Will it go well when he examines you? Keep silent now and let me speak. For even if God slays me, I will trust in him. For he is my salvation. If he summons me now, I will answer him. But Job's friends did not keep silent. They continued to accuse Job and counsel him until he could withhold his peace no more. 
Have I ever forgotten the needs of the poor? Or put my trust in gold? Have I rejoiced at the destruction of my enemies or even cursed them? Let God judge me and see that I am blameless. My desire now is for the Almighty to answer me. After realizing Job was righteous in his own eyes, his three friends remained silent. As Job and his friends were speaking, another man had arrived. His name was Elihu, and he was angry with Job's three friends because they could not answer Job's arguments and yet had condemned him. I am young and you are old. Therefore, I feared to tell you what I think. But it is the inspiration of Almighty God that gives understanding. Listen carefully to me, Job, for the spirit within me compels me to speak. I am the same as you in God's sight, formed out of clay, but I have heard you with my own ears say that you are innocent and have done no wrong, and yet God has found fault with you. Why do you complain? God speaks, but man does not recognize his voice. God speaks in dreams, in visions of the night. He whispers in the ears of men and warns them to turn from their wrongdoing to save their souls from the pit. If there be a messenger beside him who declares to God, deliver him from the pit, for I have found a ransom, then that person can pray unto God and he will show him favor and bring him joy. He will restore this man to righteousness and the restored will declare to others that he has sinned and declare that God has delivered his soul from going down the pit. God does all these things over and over with mankind. He turns a man from the pit and enlightens him with the light of life. Pay attention, Job. Hear my words. God does no evil. He does no wrong. He is fair to the rich and to the poor, for they are all the work of his hands. Men cry to the Almighty in their oppression, but none say, where is God my maker? They cry out, but he does not answer, because God does not answer an empty plea. Job opened his mouth in vain and multiplied his words without knowledge. God is almighty. He despises no one. He looks upon the righteous and delivers them from their affliction. He is greater than any of us can understand. Listen to this, Job. Be still and consider the wonders of God. The Almighty is exalted in power, yet he does not destroy us. All who are wise, fear him. Just as Elihu finished speaking, a great storm formed, and out of it, God spoke. Who gives counsel out of ignorance? Brace yourself like a man. Now I will question you, and you will give answer. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Who determined its size? Who laid its cornerstones while the angels shouted for joy? Declare now if you know. Who clothed the earth with the clouds and contained the seas with its boundaries? Have you ever commanded the sun to rise? Have you journeyed into the depths of the sea? Have you been to the gates of death? Where is the path to light? Where does darkness reside? Oh, surely you know, for you have lived many years. Have you entered the storehouse of snow and hail? Or the place where the winds are scattered over the earth? Can you capture the stars or tip the water jars of heaven? 
Can you satisfy the hunger of the lion and hunt its prey? Do you watch when the doe gives birth? Do you give the horse its strength or clothe its neck with a mane? He runs through the valley rejoicing in his strength and ready for battle. Does the eagle soar by your command or make its nest on high? Will the one who finds fault with the Almighty offer him instruction? Let him who accuses God answer now. I am not worthy to answer you. I will put my hand over my mouth. I will not say anything more. Answer me! Will you challenge my judgment? Look now at the behemoth, which I made along with you. He eats like an ox. Look at the power of his muscles. His tail is like a cedar. His bones like iron. He ranks first among the works of God, and only his creator can draw the sword against him. Can you catch Leviathan? Will you make him your servant? Or play with him as you do a bird? No one is fierce enough to rouse him. Who then is able to stand before me? I know you can do all things. I spoke of things I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me to know. My ears have heard you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. After speaking all these words to Job, God turned his attention to Eliphaz and his two friends. My anger is kindled against you. You have not spoken what is right concerning me, as my servant Job has. Therefore, take seven bulls and seven rams and offer a sacrifice. Then my servant Job will pray for you, and I will not judge you according to your foolish words. Job's three friends did as the Lord commanded, and the Lord accepted Job's prayer on their behalf. All of Job's brothers and sisters, and all those who knew him, came to visit Job and console him for all that the Lord had allowed him to suffer. Each one gave Job gifts of gold and silver. The Lord restored Job's herd to over 20,000 animals, twice the amount he owned before. Job's wife bore him 10 more children, seven sons and three daughters. The daughters of Job were the most beautiful women in all the land, and Job bestowed on them the same inheritance he gave to his sons. After this, Job lived 140 years. He saw his children and grandchildren to the fourth generation, and Job died an old man full of days.